comes to this, this, these types of moments when, when there's a loss in the family, um, there, there are no positions, there are no roles, there are no titles. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as being the strong one there because, you know, grieving for someone is not the time to be extending muscle. It's, it's the time to be, you know, opening up your arms and, and, and making this, um, you know, a family, a family moment. Um, you know, I think, I think one of the most hazardous things anyone can do is think that they can't show emotion because they need to be strong for everyone else. I think that, mm-hmm. I think those are the things that our fathers taught us and their fathers taught them and, and vice versa. I don't think there's, I don't think those apply anymore mm-hmm. because the moment we start pretending to assume that role, that's when we start, um, that's when we start taking away those important moments that we have to go through. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's critical that we, 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 we express this. And if it means, and there's no such thing as being weak when it comes to grieving. It's just, it's just it would be an asinine thought to, to say, well, you know, if I um, am grieving and if I show my emotions, I'm weak, which is so much farther from the truth because it takes a lot of strength to get through grief. And so, yeah. you know, I think, again, it, there's no such thing as, as a time limit. There is no clock. The, the earth doesn't, you know, Absolutely. stop revolving um, or speed up or slow down of, based on how we feel. It's just, it's just a process we go through. It, it does yeah. hurt. I, I still think about my father every day. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that you just can't expect it. It's it, it's like you know how they how they say sometimes if you, when, when single people are looking for their soulmate, you know don't look for it; it'll find you because it's true. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 solace just one day you're going to wake up and you're going to feel this huge burden off your shoulder and this extreme happiness. A little sadness because there's a void, but there's a great deal of happiness because it's like wow, I'm able to take ten steps forward instead of one. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think I think over time you. You know, you will do perfectly fine. Hmm. Couldn't agree more. And and um, thank you so much, Ray, for calling in and sharing. And I'm really Thanks sorry so for your loss. Thank you. And um, it's really good stuff. I think that that um, that we're sharing and to help others and to use our grief in order to help others. And and you know, some some are more recent than ours. So it's definitely really very difficult for a lot to get through i mean it doesn't there's no clock what you guys are saying um but definitely the fresher wounds are a little bit stronger and then time kind of heals it we never forget and it never goes away but it does get easier and um it's time for a break real quick it sounds like i lost james i want to make sure he's still here no man (laughs) okay all right um it's time for a break and we will be back with moments of clarity in just a moment and i want to call uh, remind callers call in 866-826-1340 i know that we have a caller waiting we'll get to that after the break so please stay tuned You're listening to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Werner. We welcome your input at 866-826-1340. Tiffany will be right back after this. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Are you or your loved ones suffering from addiction to drugs or alcohol? My name is Steven Sunquist and I am a recovered addict. You are not alone. My team of dedicated professionals at All In Solutions Counseling Center is waiting to help you. With our evidence-based services, you can rely on us to help get your life back. We accept most major insurances and offer a variety of treatment options. Call now, 561-289-0779. Again, that number is 561-289-0779. Three years ago, I made the call. Will you? Do you ask yourself any of these questions? Will I ever be able to get out of debt? Will I ever be able to retire? How am I going to pay for my children's education? How do I begin saving for my family's future? And if something were to happen to me, 
Will my family be taken care of? Have you struggled in finding the answers? Forever Forward Financial can help answer these and many more questions about your financial future by teaching you how money works, by providing you the financial education you seek, by assisting you in making the right retirement or educational decisions that are best for you and your family, and by helping you take the necessary steps in establishing and meeting your financial goals. Please call us today and schedule your complimentary no-obligation meeting to discuss your needs and concerns. The number 727-422-7761. Hi, this is Tiffany Warner, your host of Moments of Clarity. Living with a mental health disorder is not easy. If you or someone you know are struggling with this, please know it's so important to seek treatment and I'm here to help. Please visit the website at momentsofclaritywithtiffany.com to view blog posts and resources on this site to help educate and inspire you to take action because there's no shame in seeking help for mental health. While you're there, please take a few seconds to sign up for my email list. You'll get some extremely valuable educational and entertaining content that can be sent right to your inbox each week. Plus, you'll also get instant and free access to my guide on managing your anxiety. You can also follow me on Twitter at MOC with Tiffany and at Facebook at Tiffany Warner. And once again, the website is moments of clarity with Tiffany.com. Thank you so much for your support and for listening to your show because change can only come when we stand together as one. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. We are back to moments of clarity with Tiffany Warner. To join in the discussion, call 866 826 1340. Now, here's Tiffany Werner. Hi, and welcome back. And if you're just tuning in, this is Moments of Clarity. And my name is Tiffany Warner. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, and I'm your host. And today we're discussing grief and loss. And for those just tuning in, um, I'm celebrating 25 years. I would say celebrating, but uh, it's the anniversary of my mom's death 25 years ago. It seems like a lifetime ago. And decided to discuss grief and loss with a good friend of mine who lost his mom about 20 years ago and is calling in from London. And he's also a member of the Moments of Clarity team. And we're discussing how grief and loss and how to cope with it and sharing stories about loved ones that we've lost. And I welcome callers to call in 866-826-1340. And welcome back to Moments of Clarity, James Prescott. Hey, James. Hi, everyone again. Yeah. It's <laughs> and we, great. So, we, um, yeah. Good it, discussion. Yeah. It's, it's healing to talk about. And um, before we went to the great. break, we have a caller and we have a caller on the line joe hi joe thanks for calling in welcome to moments of clarity hi joe hello thank you for taking my call of course thank you for calling in have you been good good um my condolences to you and your mother i know it's you know it's the anniversary and i'm glad to believe that you're living a life that should be very happy with being a mother yourself and mm. A professional whatnot. James, thank you so much for calling in and, and sharing your wisdom. And I, I, uh, I have to agree with a lot of what Ray said, the last caller. Mm-hmm. But I have the honor and privilege of being on your show, and I shared the story about my absentee father. All right, and years later, when I became a father, my my father was back in my life sober and he was taking care of himself and I would invite him to the house all the time. He would walk my dog and hang out with me and the boys and I would take him to like our whenever the kids had a school function or a football game or would go watch the Harlem Globe Trotters, whatever the case was, I'd always try to include my dad. And then uh, 2014. Well, 2005, he had a heart attack, and they put a mm-hmm. defibrillator into his chest. 2014, uh, August of 2014, my dog died, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know I had a dog for 12 years, and I know we're talking about people. No, but dogs but, are children too. No, I mean, I, it's a thing. That's <laughs> legitimate grief. It's legitimate, completely. He was a wonderful dog. It was a black lab, and my dad, that was his buddy, you know. So that that wasn't bad enough, October of 2014, my dad got sick right around on his birthday. 
October 4th, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. And um, <clears throat> eventually they found out that he had blood clots. His lungs were full of all these blood clots, and um, his heart was starting to fail. Long story short, he died in December on one of my brother's birthdays. And I grieved. It was hard because mm-hmm. for years he was absentee. He wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Now that I have kids of my own, I wanted him to experience that because he missed so much of our stuff, you know, as we were kids. So um, for me, around the holidays, like Father's, Father's Day, his birthday, I, I really struggle. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it's, those are just memories of days that we used to acknowledge them in person, and then we're not, they're not there, but um, it's almost like it's every day that we can celebrate them just the same, you know, but Mm -hmm. anniversaries are just also reminders that something very, very special that we celebrated or very, very sad (laughs) And it you know, causes us to remember. The night before he died, I was with him for like five hours. And hospice came in. He had set up with hospice. And the next morning, he died. So I got the phone call at work. So I went over there. I know this is going to sound crazy or weird or whatever. But I just knew he was going to get up. You know, he didn't look, he looked like he was just sleeping, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the thing, I'm sorry, go ahead. We're just agreeing. We understand. We're just no. agreeing. <laughs> I'm so, sorry for uh, your loss, Joe. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. What's really sad is, you know, the absentee and then you reunite and then you finally finally have him there, and then he's gone, and that's even like a double loss, you know? So that's, that's what makes hard, it extra yeah. hard. Yeah, because there's the grief of not seeing seeing him for those years, and almost like feeling like that relationship was, was gone, and then having it back and then losing it again. Mm-hmm. But at least like you got it back, you know? Grief, you know, and it's, yeah, I'm really sorry for your loss. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that you were able to get to know each other as adults, at least, for a little bit. Yeah, that is a good thing. The most beautiful beautiful thing of it all, in my opinion, is he completely turned his life around. He stopped drinking. He got his own apartment. Everybody loved him. He reconciled with my mother, my Mm. sister, my brothers. My two youngest brothers, who are not his, they're not his, you know, consider him like a stepdad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I know that he didn't die, like, he passed out drunk from, he didn't die being homeless and like, dying out in the elements. So, so. Well, it sounds like he, you know, lived a good life then. Uh, you know, after yeah. he pulled it together, and that's how I'd want to be. You know, if I had made bad mistakes in my life and then yeah. repaired them and had the chance and opportunity to. But I'm sorry for your yeah. loss, Joe, and thank you for sharing. And you know, yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, and, and so much of that resonated with me. You know, my my mother, like I said, was an alcoholic, and before she passed away, she had got herself together. You know, she had stopped drinking she had gone into recovery she had started getting her life together and even her and my dad like we were on kind of getting on better and we were all getting on better as a family mm-hmm. and yeah the last time she saw my sister was when she said goodbye to her at the airport when my sister went off traveling the last time she saw my dad i think was when they had a drink together the week before a couple mm-hmm. of weeks before. And the last time she saw me was the night before she died and she gave me a big hug. Um, yeah, and I'll never forget that, obviously. So we all, 
I, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm not. I know that that's not the, the case with everybody who loses somebody. That you get to have that kind of goodbye, but um, I did, and I'm glad I did. And yeah. um, it's nice closure. Again, that helps me. Leaving is actually like sometimes it's you know what did they think of me? <laughs> you know how how are we getting on? 